Alrighty, so today we are continuing on with the Keepa series. If anyone's not familiar, Keepa is the most critical tool that you need to run your Amazon FBA business. It takes out the guesswork of any decision-making process once you fully understand it, and it's only about $20 a month. I'm not here to sell you on it. It's just critical, and that's why I'm breaking it down. And today, we are focusing on the very bottom chart, which is where you can see how many people are currently and historically selling that product in new condition. Now that ties in both FBM sellers and FBA sellers, and believe it or not, that chart can provide a lot of context clues in your purchasing decision, how you should price stuff, etc. So I've got three bits of information that you can take from this that I think are really valuable, and even a asterisk, kind of like three and a half, uh, for one that's a little bit applicable to a certain group of people that are probably new to this. I'm Jonathan, Duke does Amazon. This is my Amazon selling channel. I've been doing this for about two years now and recently started uploading videos. Everything I've learned, continue to learn, documenting, etc. And so let's dive into it. So believe it or not, just by looking at the number of sellers in Keepa in the new seller chart, there's actually two types of charts that could help you avoid IP complaints. Now I wanna preface before I show you both examples, these in themselves are not enough to completely avoid IP complaints, but they are two things that I look for when I go through my entire process, when I'm selling a new brand or a new item. This way I don't get caught up in selling something that I know a brand is gonna hit me with an IP complaint and there's obvious data that I could have easily looked at, okay? By the way, I just made a full video on everything I do to avoid IP complaints. I'll link that here. Um, but the first thing that we're gonna look at, I'll explain it before I take you there. Imagine there's a very, very steady amount of sellers, five, 10, 20, and, and something within that range, right? It always is gonna fluctuate a little. And then basically you see a 90 degree dip overnight. That's a clear cut sign that the brand has issued an IP complaint. For a good selling product to have a bunch of sellers and then go down overnight to essentially nothing, that's a textbook sign that they've been issuing IP complaints, started to do it on a regular basis, whatever the case may be. So I have open in front of me here a Keepa chart for a product that I actually recently came across. It's just random. So this is a three month snapshot, okay? So if you follow my cursor, back here on February 26th, there was 15 new, so there was 15 sellers, okay? Selling the product in new condition. Now if I hover over, here there's 14, here there's 22, here there's 15, and then fast forward over here, there's 22 on March 29th, okay? Now look what happens. By March 30th, there is two, okay? So it, from, it went from 22 sellers to two sellers in one day. That is a textbook sign that the brand issued IP complaints that day for whatever reason and probably hadn't done so previously because for a long time there was always about 20 sellers. The other chart I'm gonna show you, this is a different example. If there's only one seller and only one seller for an extended period of time, especially on a good selling product, okay? So if you notice, as I hover here, again, I'm actually spanning it right, this is a one year snapshot there has literally only been one seller on this product, okay? That is a clear cut sign to me that the brand themselves are selling this product and if anybody else were to hop on it, they would likely hit them with an IP complaint. So again, these two charts by themselves are not enough. You have to look at other factors too. And my other video covers that but those are two major context clues just by looking at the seller chart that can help you avoid IP complaints. So now what we can do is use the seller chart to actually understand where this product falls at the current point in time in the supply cycle. And although the supply cycle is a long, wide spectrum, it basically falls under three categories. You have decreasing or no supply, you have steady supply, and you have increasing supply. After this, we're gonna talk about pricing and where you're at with supply and demand, how it affects that, but I just want to show you visually what it looks like. So here's an example in front of us. 
So here's a good example that I happen to come across again. We're just focusing on this bottom chart, which indicates the number of sellers selling this product in new condition. So right here, if you follow me, I'm gonna just highlight for a minute. This, if I were to look at this product and buying it at any of these points in time, okay, I would look back because there's some, uh, you know, weeks before this, months before this, and say, okay, I'm right in the middle of a very, very steady supply and I will price accordingly. Now, let's go over here where there's only two sellers or one seller. So I'll highlight this just to kind of show it. It went from six very steadily down to one in basically a matter of a month, okay? So if I come across a product on like this date when there's two sellers or one and it's continuously trending down, that lets me know I'm catching it on the downward slope. If I catch it here, I'm gonna highlight it. When there's literally no blue background, there's no line there. When there's no blue line, that lets you know that literally nobody is selling the product, so there's none in stock. And then lastly, now it comes back in stock and you can see what it looks like when it increases. Okay, the number of sellers is increasing, meaning the amount of supply is increasing. I just wanna share what that looks like visually because that is going to lend well to our next topic, which is gonna be about using the seller count and chart for pricing. Alrighty, so part three. Now we can utilize the seller chart to understand how we should price something, okay? Really, before we get into it, it just is supply and demand. And as we just went over, basically if you read the chart, the more sellers, typically the more supply. The less sellers, the less supply. So you can price accordingly. And whatever you see on your seller app or your scanning app, if you're not looking at the Keepa chart, you are only seeing live time, how many sellers and for what price. You have to really look back to understand where you fall in that supply chart. You know, are you catching this as something's decreasing? If so, you can charge a premium. If you're catching something as the amount of sellers and supply has influxed all of a sudden, you're not gonna be able to sell it for the same price. And you need to be able to read this in live time in order to make educated decisions. So I want you to pay attention. We're just looking at the seller chart. And this isn't a video just about, I don't wanna bombard you with the pricing, but basically this top chart here, this pink line and blue line indicates what it is typically selling for or, or what it is selling for at that given time, okay? So if you notice, to the left of the seller chart, very, very steady all the way up to here when it goes out of stock, right? So look, it basically sold for $55, 56, uh, 57, 54, 55, 56, so very, very consistent, within $5, within 10%, right? As the amount of sellers and supply was very even as well, right? I'll highlight it just visually. So this whole point in time, very steady amount of sellers, a little up, a little down, that's very common, and the price in turn was also steady. Now look what happens as we get to here. The amount of sellers decreases a little, and then the price climbs up right here to $60. So it went from 55 here to 60 here. There's only one seller, so naturally they got to charge a little bit more, and because of supply and demand, they got it. Now here we go through the stage where there's no sellers. So what happens is if when you become the first person back on the market for an item that's in high demand, you can charge a premium. So look what happens. When it does come back, it's sold for $89.99. And then even a little after, $118.95, $105. And then here, as you can see, the amount of sellers starts to come back, which means the amount of supply comes back in supply and demand naturally the price is gonna decrease. So here, just hovering, now it goes back to $60, $67, $60, $55. So basically it went from steady supply, you can charge 55. Minimal supply, 60. Then it goes out of stock, so there's a, 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 a built up demand for it. They come back. They start charging 90, 110, 120, and they get it. And then the other sellers catch up on their supply as there must have been a surge into the marketplace and it goes back down to $55. So that's a great picture of the cycle. 
and you need to understand where you're at on the cycle so that you can price accordingly and also make your purchasing decisions accordingly. Alrighty, so then this last one. I'm gonna throw out an asterisk. This is one of those kinda, sorta, it only is gonna pertain to a few people, but you're gonna get the logic behind it. It can kinda, sorta help you decide if you should do a decent sized test buy or a small test buy or not. And the reason I say with an asterisk and everything else is because the seller chart gives you the number of people selling a product in new condition, both FBM, fulfillment by merchant, and FBA, fulfillment by Amazon. For someone like myself that does 99.9% .9 FBA, when I use the amount of sellers to gauge how many of a product I should buy, I'm only basing that on sellers that are also doing FBA and priced appropriately. So knowing that I would be priced close to them and they're doing FBA, those are the only competitive sellers that I look at. So for instance, if something sells 30 times a month and I see two other sellers that I consider to be FBA competitively priced sellers, so I would be the third, I would gauge that we would each get 10 sales per month, okay? Just as a very, very elementary level of numbers, okay? If there's 10 FBM sellers, I don't even factor them in. And like I said, this chart factors in those FBM sellers. Where looking at the seller chart can be beneficial in how many of something you buy is that let's say you find something and you calculate it sells 100 times per month, okay? and you see there's only five total new sellers. Well, even if you factor in all of the sellers, including FBM sellers, you can rest assured that you're gonna get a good amount number of sales, and if it's your first time buying, you can feel confident maybe going for 10 instead of just three, or something like that. Contrarily, if something sells 20 times per month and you see that there's 50 sellers, regardless of if they're FBM or FBA, it's kind of a good indication you're gonna get very few amount of sales. Now again, this is very, very general stuff for a new seller who just happens to see those charts, okay? So I just wanna paint that picture for you. That's one last way that you can kinda of, sorta of use the chart if you're new to a product or new to selling on Amazon, you just kinda of run the ratios of the amount of times a product sells a month versus the sellers um, that are currently and historically selling that product at any given time. Before we wrap this up, I just wanna make a couple notes. For one, based on my settings, I only had it in tune to the amount of sellers selling stuff in new condition, as I think the overwhelming majority of people only sell new on Amazon, plus I'm not competing with anybody that's selling it used. Think about it, the market for used and new is completely different. Secondly, um, there's other data you can get in that chart. I just wanted to focus specifically on the number of sellers, and we'll get into other little selections you can make in that chart another time. And then other than that, as you can see, there's a lot of good information that you can get just from looking at the number of sellers. And when you start combining the information from this chart with the sales rank and the buy box, there's a lot of different context clues that can help take all the guesswork out of any purchasing decision. It just takes reps and reps come from taking action. Stay with it, it becomes second nature. I'm Jonathan, this is Duke Does Amazon. We're on Instagram as well uh, for like short tips and tricks and some other stuff. If you have any comments, put them below. Have a great day, I'll see you guys soon.